This episode of Tea with Jules is proudly brought to you by The Home. You can shop any of the items you see in this episode at thehome.com.au. joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm a big fan of your work. Oh, thank you. You're an illustrator, an artist, and you're also an author as well. So yes. we can talk about that a little bit later. But I feel like this this set is sort of you in a set. Yes. yes. It's very musical. It's Love a it. bit dreamy. It's a bit of pink in there. Yes. <laughs> it kind of matches all your drawings. Thank you. So are you a tea drinker? I'm a big tea drinker. Yes, I love tea. My partner's English, so a lot of tea going on in our house. I love a bit of Earl Grey or English breakfast. Earl Grey is one of those ones that not everyone loves, though. I know. You're what you're for or against. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about you and your amazing work. I, Like I said, I'm such a fan, and probably because your drawings are very fashion-skewed, I'm going to say. So can you take me back to where this all began? Well, I was born in Brisbane, and I grew up there, and I just remember always loving drawing. I loved painting and drawing, and I definitely remember begging my parents to send me to a weekend art school and I did so many little sketches and drawings there and I there was one in particular that I remember doing it was of a a clown doll which was really popular when I was a kid Mm -hmm. um, those clown dolls and it was you know it was on a proper board and I remember my art teacher saying you know you should you should sign it because you're an artist and I found it not so long ago at my parents' house. Oh, wow. And I'd signed it with the year. And How old were you when you did that? I was nine. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's such a strong memory for mm. me. Um, but then I went on to study graphic design. I thought I would have to get a real job. Mm-hmm. I didn't honestly think that you could be an artist, yeah. you know. Um, so I studied that in Brisbane and then moved to London and worked as a graphic designer for about a year. Mm-hmm. And one week a photo didn't come through that we were working on at the magazine that I was at. Um, And so I said, well, I might be able to sketch something for this piece. Was it a fashion magazine that you were working for? So it was for the weekend magazines Mm -hmm. for the independent newspaper. Mm -hmm. So it was like a weekend fashion supplement magazine. Mm -hmm. And I did it and it ended up becoming like a regular thing every week. I got a column to illustrate. And from there, I just got a job for a big fashion window um, client that that worked for Topshop. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, oh, maybe I could do this. So I ended up doing um, one year as an artist just to see if I could pay my rent Mm -hmm. as an artist. And that was a long time ago. That was about 17 years ago now. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Do you remember that first drawing? I do, but I don't have, I mean, I've lost, I don't have it. It was so long ago. Um, but I do remember just doing it and then my next job, taking it physically to the Arcadia Group, which owns Stop Shop, mm-hmm. um, taking it to their office myself. I like, couriered it there myself. This is like before people even emailed right. images yeah. so long ago. Everything is so digital. Yeah. yeah. I almost feel like in the art world, it's done a full circle mm-hmm. and there's so much digital stuff now that like most of my work's done by hand. Yeah. So... I almost feel like that's more special in some ways. Right. There's something really kind of... uh, Romantic, Yeah, and mysterious a little bit. Looking back from your first kind of jobs, I suppose, that you didn't really know were going to be jobs at that point. Yes. Can you see the improvement or can you see your style has developed into what it is now? Yeah, yeah. I I wasn't very good. I don't think I was very good in the beginning. I mean, I, I knew I loved drawing and I knew I... I wanted to do this as my job. I think I've probably moved more and more to the fine art side of things. I just think um, that's what I enjoy the most. I don't actually like being at a computer, Mm -hmm. but more and more I think painting is just what I love doing, so I'd almost rather at least have half of my time where I'm just painting, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's for an exhibition or for myself. What was your your big break? Because I know that you have worked with a lot of 
ridiculously amazing brands, Louis Vuitton, yeah. um, you sketch for Chanel and Vogue. Yes. And these are like household proper like fashion icons. I think it was the same year that I did a big job for a big department store in Paris called Planton. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had really big billboards. They were like 13 metres wide all over Paris. Wow. That was a big one. Mm -hmm. I was pretty excited about that job and then also um, exhibiting in Paris, doing a solo show wow. at this amazing hotel called Le Maurice. Mm -hmm. um, and when we decided to do that, we were actually having a chat together at the hotel um, over tea mm -hmm. and we decided to do an exhibition and then we walked around and looked at where we could do it and there was this room called the Salon Pompadour where Salvador Dali had exhibited before. So, I mean, no pressure. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm so nervous to do this, but sometimes you've got to do those things and just say yes. Mm -hmm. You think, maybe I can't do this, mm -hmm. but just say yes and stitch up a plan later of yeah. how you'll do yeah. it. Yeah. So those two things, I think, were two things that really kind of moved me, probably more in the Paris um, side of things. Yeah. Is that some sort of dream? Like, that's pretty cool. It's like I always think, is it a mistake? I did not think that growing up, you know, in the suburbs in Brisbane that I would end up working for some of any of these brands, to be yeah. honest. I really didn't. And how does it work? Do they, they get in touch with you and they have a brief in mind? Usually or? it works like that. But I had a really interesting one with um, Louis Vuitton a mm -hmm. few years ago where, and this was when Marc Jacobs was the head of mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton, um, where they said, look, we'd like you to write the brief and we'll present it to Mark. Wow. <laughs> so No pressure. <laughs> I was like, um, okay, all right, I can do that. It was about mixing their resort and classic collections and how we could do it. So we ended up, my idea was um, like doing paper dolls. Mm -hmm. Do you remember those yes. little paper dolls yes. when you were kids? We did those. And you could, there was four Louis Vuitton dolls mm -hmm. and you could mix and match the clothes from mm -hmm. Classic and Resort and actually print it out Amazing. from Louis Vuitton.com. And they loved the idea. Yeah. That's a real gift to, to have a creative mind and to come up with these amazing concepts. Mm. But there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes in order to get to, to that point. What would you say your role in making us, the consumer, understand about the brand or about the point of it? I think for me it's just always trying to find a balance of representing what the brand wants to represent mm -hmm. as well as create something really beautiful that I'm really proud of too. Yeah. So I think it's just throwing out a few different ideas and see what works. Sometimes I, I'm given an idea from the client and then I might do something they feel and show them that as well mm -hmm. and sometimes they go with that. And where is your happy place? Where are you most sort of content and happy? Probably just in my studio. I have a little boy so if my son's drawing next to me just painting you know sometimes I go to these events that are at the very end of a project um, but that will be just one percent of the project. Most of it's just painting and that's my favourite Part. I'm a real homebody. Yeah. I think that's most artists. They just like yeah. the actual doing of it. Yeah. You feel the paint and the canvas and the blank canvas and the idea that's about to come and yeah. then the, the finished product. Yeah, true. But it's funny, like when I did that, that exhibition in Paris, it was huge, 18 large original pieces. And the thing I was most nervous about was giving a speech. Right. Not. That, <laughs> not <laughs> Painting the pieces. We were talking about this earlier. When yeah. when you're good at something and then you get recognised for being good at something, then you're all of a sudden kind of expected to be good at the upfront stuff, like yeah. speaking in front of people or working a room at an exhibition. Completely. How have you out overcome, because I'm sure you've had to do it a few times now, like yeah. right now? Yeah, right now. I think it's just practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when I had an started my Instagram page I never used to include myself because mm -hmm. I only ever wanted to photograph or shoot my artwork mm -hmm. and then one day a friend of mine was taking some photos and she popped in and took some photos of me working on one of my pieces and I was you know in an old t-shirt and jeans it was not 
terribly glamorous, mm -hmm. but I thought, oh, maybe it's nice to see that behind the scenes stuff and people really responded to mm -hmm. it and loved it. And I think that's when I realized that people, they kind of did want to see a little bit of Who me in a yeah. way. I think I've just gotten used to it, but yeah, I'm still, you know, very much a, a quiet person who isn't used to this type of thing. Yeah, for sure. shy by nature. Yeah. I'm a little bit the same. Really? Yeah. You don't come across. Shy. I am. Okay. I'm scared a lot. <laughs> We're both scared. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I think you're right. You just have to jump in yeah. and hope for the Put best. Your big girl pants on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you, you lived in London and you worked and you that's where you became a full-time artist, I suppose. Yeah, and then moved there from there to Hong Kong for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and then a, a bit of a, a stint in Melbourne and then Paris, and now back to Brisbane. You're a world traveller. <laughs> now let's talk about Paris because okay. who doesn't love Paris <laughs> and who doesn't want to live there for some portion of their sure. life? Sure. I was there for my honeymoon, so yeah. it's kind of a dream Perfect for me. Spot. Yeah. yeah, I've only been there for a couple of days, but... I loved every minute. Yeah. But what is it like actually living and working in Paris? I don't want to burst the bubble, but it's a little bit different okay. um, than when you're on holiday. But don't worry. Carrie from Sex and the City already burst my bubble. Yes. Okay? Yes, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an amazing city. Um, but it is a really, it is a tough city too on, on another side. I think just because it's such a big city, um, and it's a very competitive place to live in every way, just even to get an apartment. And I think while I was there, whilst I had, like my son was two at the time, so I was, you know, taking him around and taking him back and forth to kindy. You went to kindy there. Which in itself is hard, having a two-year-old yeah, far less yeah, living in another country. Yeah, I wasn't country, really, you know, out at events and galleries. Right. I was mm -hmm. living a pretty simple life there, but um, I still, I still really enjoyed um, lots of things and worked with lots of brands and learnt to speak French reasonably well. So you learnt um, when you were there to speak? Oh, the I had been learning French for a long time mm -hmm. um, before that, but I just decided I'm not going to speak English um, apart from to my son. Yeah. And does I he mean, speak French? He does. Oh, yeah, wow. he does. He corrects me all the time. Oh too. my gosh. He has a, you know, kids, they just pick yeah. it up. He's got a really good accent and la he laughs at my accent, which is quite funny. So is um, your little French accent? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's how adorable. cute. So cute. But no, it was great. I loved living in Paris and I made some amazing friends. Yeah, so what brought you home? I always thought I'd come back to Australia and my son was five mm -hmm. and it was like the time that he's about to start school. Yeah. And he'd moved around a little bit and I just thought it'd be nice to just settle, be near family. Um, have a, a bigger studio because my studio in Paris was in my bedroom. <laughs> right. Well, we're glad to have you back. You. <laughs> and tell me about this book you have. Now, it's called Shoe String Chic, 101 Ways to Live the Fashionably Luxe Life for Less. So this is my lane. Yeah, yes, it is. This yes. is my lane. So you don't need to tell me 101 ways no. because we'll read the book to get all of the information. Okay. But Give us some pearls of wisdom. Well, I think um, to go back to Paris again, the thing I learnt from living there, so your wardrobe in Paris is this wide. Right. Like that's it. That's all you've oh, got. It's no. like so small. I would die. It's, and yeah, everyone's really chic. You walk around and everyone's, you know, looking pretty yeah. fabulous. I yeah. don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think it comes from there's so little room in your wardrobe mm -hmm. that you can't buy things that you don't really love. Right. You tend to invest in like a really good blazer, mm -hmm. really good flats, mm -hmm. ballet flats, um, really great pair of jeans, great white shirt. Invest in those things and then the other things like t-shirts and, and so on can be less expensive, mm -hmm. I think. I think it's keeping it really simple and neutrals. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you agree with it. Yep. They tend to look more expensive. Mm -hmm. So those black, white, grey, beige, something really inexpensive in a fluoro colour I tend to think looks worse <laughs> but if it's you know if it's something simple it's white or it's black or it's grey mm -hmm. it's probably going to look more expensive than it yeah. was I yep. think yeah and I, I tend to not follow trends too much mm -hmm. I yeah I tend to I think if you buy a lot of trends they'll they'll go out right so maybe keeping it simple with mm -hmm. like the odd you know the Trendy odd trend piece. thrown yeah. in mm -hmm. um 
is, is good if you're on a bit of a budget. That was Thank good. <laughs> that was really good. Thank you. Do you think there's um, trends, I suppose, in art as well? Yeah, I do. But it's, I think, moving to a more um, organic place. People are kind of more excited about something that's really rare and hard mm -hmm. to get. Yeah. Yeah, I think the trend is just probably being really authentic and I probably, you know, I don't go towards the digital side too much just because we have so much of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, painting, brush strokes, watercolour, yep. canvases, I tend to think that's probably more where I'm headed anyway. Being a working mother. Yes. Here's, here's the, the million dollar. And I, yes. I ask this question to all the mothers that sit on this couch because I think we're all in search of the yes. oracle answer yes. <laughs> on how the heck. <laughs> I think, I think you, well, you can have it all, but just you can't have it all at the same time. Yes. I think, for sure. I know myself when I'm working, I'm working. And when I'm in the park with my son, I don't want to check emails. I don't want to, I, I don't multitask. Mm -hmm. I think the key for me is not multitasking. It's one thing that I'm doing, whether it's, you know, hanging out with my son or painting. Yeah. I try and not do both mm -hmm. because you can't, you can't. Um, I think it's also just being really kind to yourself mm -hmm. as well and not trying to be perfect mm -hmm. because you know, no one is and mm -hmm. you're just going to end up angry. I think if you try and be perfect, you're just not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying yes to everything, I think, is is really important as well. Just mm -hmm. like picking the things you really want to do. You're exactly right. If you're not the best version of yourself, then you're not the best mother. Yeah. So you've got to kind of feed both sides of it. Yeah, be the superwoman thing is... Yeah, I feel like those women are the women in your drawings uh, yeah, perfect. probably yeah they're well dressed all the time yeah. it's quite funny though i'm drawing them in jeans and a t-shirt so that's the irony <laughs> often without my shoes on so that's right. the irony exactly yeah you're painting the perfect <laughs> woman i wish i was you yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. have you ever thought that have you ever painted and just thought oh actually that's a great outfit i wouldn't mind wearing that myself yeah i often paint <laughs> outfits like i've got nowhere to wear them to but outfits that i wish you know big couture dresses that mm -hmm. I'd love to own and yes. just like sit around in and yeah. have a cup of tea. See the carry moment in yeah, Paris exactly, with the dress exactly. and the fabric. Yeah. That is everyone's dream. It is. It is. I think. It I think. Is. So tell me, have, have you ever been given a really great piece of advice in your life that you've kind of carried through? I think probably just the thing of saying yes and figure it out later if you don't know how to do it at the yep. time. I, I definitely believe in that. I think most of us are doing that, yep. don't you think? Yep. Most of us say yes to things mm -hmm. and then think, I'm not really sure, but. Oh. All the time. Yeah, I, so I think that's that's a really big one. And just, yeah, just facing things that make you a bit nervous. And don't you think the more things you do and try it leads you to the next thing? Yeah, and sometimes it's good to think what's the worst thing that could happen? That is, that is good. Sometimes yeah. it's not that bad. Yeah. So, yeah, if you just do it, and even if the worst thing possible happens, mm -hmm. well, that's all right. You know, you'll learn something. Yeah. I, I often think that. What about in terms of your illustrations? Have you ever just started one and just thought, this is terrible, actually. I'm just going to... Every day. Oh. Okay. Every day, because my work is with generally watercolour. Yeah. So I can't fix it. Yeah. If I... Canvases you can cut because it's acrylic. You can kind of go over that medium and change it and adjust it and right. move it into a better direction if mm -hmm. you're not happy with what you just did. But watercolor is it is what it is. It dries and you can't go over it. Right. So yeah, every day. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Did yeah. your parents, when you were younger, were they just like, oh my gosh, she's amazing at this. We have need we need to harness this. And did oh, they know? I think that any parent is going to be nervous if their child wants to be an artist. Right. I'm going to be honest. I right. think most parents would be like, um, you should probably think about getting a real job. Yep. But no, they were always really encouraging mm -hmm. and um, always just said, just, you know, do what you want to do. If you feel like this is what you want to do, you should just try it and see how you go. Do you still sometimes get surprised that this is your career? Sometimes I do. I'll be having a day in my office and I'm 
I think I actually thought this the other week, I was doing a painting for Cartier mm -hmm. and I definitely thought to myself, I'm so lucky. So what can we see more of you? Like what, what's next? For me, I think it's just more paintings, originals, mm -hmm. and moving more into that zone, more prints um, in my little print shop. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's really the, the place that I'm moving more into. I still love collaborating with brands, but mm -hmm. it's really nice sometimes to just paint things that are for someone's home yes. or for yourself. And if someone likes it and wants to buy it, that's great. I get almost more of a buzz about that than billboards and all of that type of thing. Right. I think it's because it's really personal and mm -hmm. then people take photos and send them to me mm -hmm. and I see my friends in their home and I, I think that I get more of a thrill out of that. Really? Yeah. That's I so, so nice. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing everything you do. Thank you, And Jules. I've already commissioned you <laughs> for this house that we're trying to build. Let's get there. Let's get there. One in every room, thanks, especially in the wardrobe. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> My inspiration. Thank you so much for coming today. Oh, I appreciate you coming down from Brizzy yes. and spending some time with me. You on didn't drink couch. any of the tea. I'm going to have some it's tea now. Stone cold. It's stone cold. Let me try. It's, it's stone cold, trust me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's and there's the glamour right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jules. It's my pleasure.